Yo, what's up, guys? This is Weekend Mentoring for November 6th. Been trucking through a bunch of Weekend Mentoring. So, yeah, I'm hoping that this one will be a good one. And, uh, yeah, I think we have, a, we have a good variety of charts, shorts, longs, dumb stuff, good stuff. Um, so, you know, Great. it'll be a good one. Um, so this one, um, you know, I kind of wanted to talk about this one because I guess he was going long. And... I mean, to me personally, I don't really love going long after this type of kind of death candle action. Like you have to remember that when you're in a situation, when you're longing, when you're kind of getting set up, um, you know, after this death candle, everyone above it is now trapped, right? So if I'm long, you know, 1290, 1280 up here, and all the stock, all of a sudden, the stock drops a dollar. Like every single long trader is going to panic, and that's why you get that grindy action on the way up. Now we do kind of reclaim, and then end up going lower. But to me personally, that'd be more of a short on on you know the pops for me. Um, you know, and it, it it wouldn't have worked out either way. But usually on these types of trades and on these types of kind of situations, that pop is usually you know, a good time to get short. And then if it's not breaking down, not breaking down, not breaking down, you just kind of cut it and you avoid long and you avoid short. And, you know, OCGN, it's always going to be a headache stock. Um, was afraid of red candle, had bad average, even with small size. Yeah, I would just ignore this type of setup for me as a long trader, you know, stocks like pretty much broken. Um, you know, Obviously, we've gotten this kind of death candle action, not an area where you want to get long. Um, and, you know, you don't want to be getting long over this high either at high day, right? High potential that that's not going to work and that we're not going to be able to get above that. And then we ended up getting above it and then just absolutely getting crushed. So at, for me as a long trader, if you're trying to do a first bounce and you get this kind of bounce, the first bounce is a very, very quick play. And if you watch Bao in main chat, you know, this week or the past two weeks, he's filled in seconds, right? He fills his order. Um, and then he's placing that sell order almost right away. Like his scalps are like minute to minute on the first bounce, right? He's not holding it. He's not marrying the position, right? Um, and so in this type of situation, I would probably just avoid the long and avoid the the short, um, you know, and, and that's all I have to say about this one. Yeah, I... I... I kind of, I agree. It's and from a first bounce perspective. I don't think the setup was, was ideal. Uh, holding VWAP. I mean, you could, it, I wouldn't call it a first bounce, right? I would definitely wouldn't call it that. If you wanted to give it a shot because it's holding VWAP and it's holding above VWAP and there's an opportunity to move back towards the prior highs. Sure. It's, that's a valid trade. I call that a valid uh, long opportunity. If, if that's a trade thesis that you can have in plan, but you know, kind of like Harry's saying, once you have that, that huge, move back right that's a it's a it's a big move back in the perspective of how far it's coming down but when you look at the move from the low of the day to the high of the day it's 50 percent of the move that it came back on right so you know if, if I'm, i i'm not going to tout fibonacci and all that bs right but if you're looking at that kind of a thing like you got people who are going to be taking profit as this thing launched up people stopping out all that kind of shit so if if you're taking that shot, it's holding VWAP, you jump in and you, you take the opportunity, you got your risk parameters set up. You know, ideally your, your stop is somewhere behind a prior low or a VWAP area and you kind of ride it out. I don't, I can't tell based on the typing that was put into this thing, if that first exit was a mistake or if it was the next one that was a mistake. Yeah, this trade is really good. Uh, you know, you can sell that, you know, that person you know, really pre-plan his trade, right? Uh, or like, you know, pre-plan his limit orders or fantasy orders beforehand instead of, you know, uh, trading based on the emotions or like trading on the fly, you won't get this type of chart at all. And so I think this is a really good one. Uh, he saw like a support here, you know, that's why you cover another one, support here is why you cover. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. Yes, you know, easier, uh, said and done of course we want to cover some trend down here right but you know that's sometimes it's impossible in real-time trading as, as you know it's not easy but i like the scale here so it's maybe it's average was around here so pretty decent uh setup that's how i would trade every day so good job sam
Yeah, perfect. And I believe, yeah, we have one more from Sam as well. You know, same sort of plan, right? This is what I wanted yeah, to highlight. Perfect. Sam submitted like so many charts that are like identical. So I wanted to add two because it's literally like, again, broken stock, short the pop, cover lower, nail and bail. And of course, you're always going to have people who are like, oh, you should have covered lower, should have covered lower, should have covered higher. You know, it's the market. It's hindsight. I'm sure both times he thought, oh, maybe this is going to bounce. I'll be able to add more and then cover lower, right? Everything is in, is in hindsight, you know? So I think it's good. You know, if your plan is to short a 550 and cover up five bucks, you know, that's pretty sound to me. So again, it's these types of plans, right? Yeah, right. We have a ton of people who are, you know, killing it on the broken stocks, right? That's perfect, right? So you know, shout out to everyone. Um, another like really good plan, right? 550, meaningful level, like I talked about, right? What are the meaningful levels on this chart here? 550, you know, 57, 58, that's a meaningful level, right? Next meaningful level would be like six bucks, right? Or I can't really see to the left of the chart, but that's what I'd assume. So um, yeah, you know, pay attention to that type of stuff as well. Yep, green, love Good it. Job. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, this is another, uh, broken type of setup. I'm not really sure if this is low hanging fruit or really what was this? Um, think or swim was, was down when I was doing this, they were doing like, maybe it was, stuff, yeah. so it could was. load many of the charts, but yeah, low hanging fruit setup, right. Short the pop cover lower. Um, the only thing is that you, you started scaling a little bit, a little bit early, right. Um, you know, there's dipping your toe in and then there's, you know, getting your leg bit off. This is the type of situation where you have one really good trade. You know, it, I always have kind of a rule. And when I looked at this one, it kind of jogged my memory of that rule is that if I have one really good trade, you know, big one, like, you know, let's say I'm short 30, 38.8 and I cover down there at, you know, let's say, let's say, and let's pretend he covered at 34.8, right? I never want to jump in a trade right after, right? I think what happened on this one is that you know, he covered a bit early and then he started kind of, kind of revenge trading on that bounce, right? He's like, oh, 35, oh, 36, oh, 37, right? But you should be looking for kind of like at least like, you know, halfway of the death candle, right? Where you want to start kind of looking to, looking to scale into this one. Because like scaling down here at the bottom is just kind of like, you know, it's, it's like a death, right? So if you have a really good trade or you know, if you're saying to yourself, oh, this, this could have been a big trade if I was in it, you know, don't look to revenge right away, you know, have some patience, um, you know, 